Hi folks, I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. Plywood with a nice hardwood face veneer on it, like this walnut ply, looks almost as good as solid wood. That is, except for these edge plies. They don't take stain well, they don't look anything like the face veneer, and almost invariably they're better off hidden. Now there's a number of different approaches you can take for hiding edge plies. You can iron on some solid wood veneer edge tape, or you can cut thin strips of solid wood and just glue them right onto the edge to hide the plies. But in the case of this nightstand project, I had to take a different approach. The four carcass panels of this nightstand are made of this walnut plywood, and the design called for a deep chamfer to be routed all the way around the front face. So in this instance, thin iron-on edge tape or thin strips of solid wood just wouldn't work here. I needed to apply edging to the front of these panels that was thick enough so that I could route into it just like solid wood. So here was my solution. I started by making up some three-quarter by three-quarter inch sticks of solid walnut, and on the edge of those hardwood strips, I milled a quarter by quarter inch tongue. Those fit into a quarter inch groove that runs along the edge of the plywood. This tongue and groove joint makes a solid interlocking connection that can't slip around when you're clamping the parts together. And it gave me plenty of solid wood on the front of my panels to mill those deep chamfers for the nightstand. Even better, you can make this entire joint with a quarter inch slot cutting router bit. Here's how to do it. We'll start with the groove cuts in the plywood first. So once you've installed your slot cutting router bit in your router table, raise or lower the bit until it's centered on the thickness of the plywood. I've got a scrap of my walnut plywood here and I've marked one end for where that quarter inch wide groove cut should go. So now I'll adjust my bit height to hit my marks. Now unlock your router table fence and slide the fence over the bit so just a quarter inch of the cutters extend past the fence face. And once you've got the bit exposure correct, and of course you should be making all these adjustments with the router unplugged, lock down the fence, and then close up these fence facings to eliminate gaps on either side of the bit, and lock the fence facings in place. Now test your groove setup on a plywood scrap by running it past the bit with one face down and then the other in two passes. Now if your groove setup gives you a nice quarter inch by quarter inch groove, you're all set to run your plywood panels. But if this groove is a little bit too wide, it means that the bit wasn't quite centered on the thickness of the plywood in the first place. So go ahead and make a little adjustment in its height one way or the other to improve it and make two more test passes. And by the same token, if the groove is a little bit too deep or too shallow, move the router fence one way or the other to make that adjustment and make two more passes to check it. Once you get your settings all dialed in, go ahead and run the grooves on your plywood panels. So now you've got grooves cut along the edge of your plywood panel, and it's time to cut some tongues on your edging to fit those grooves. Here's what a piece of the edging I made looks like. Now you could start with narrow sticks of stock like this and mill a tongue onto each and every one. But this is really narrow material to work with, particularly when you're feeding the stock past your slot cutting bit with feather boards on top and alongside to help guide the cut. So here's a safer approach. Instead, make your edging from wider strips of material like this. That way, you can make two edging pieces from each piece of stock rather than just one. And once the tongues are milled, you can rip them apart in two. I started with edging stock that was two and a half inches wide. To prepare for cutting these tongues on the edging, your groove cutting setup gets you about halfway there already. 
start by loosening your router table fence and tapping it forward just a little bit so not quite as much bit is exposed past the fence. And I'm only talking about maybe a 32nd of an inch here. That way, the length of these tongues will be slightly shorter than the depth of the grooves you've made so the tongues will seat fully in the grooves. Now lower the bit until the top edge of the cutter just kisses the bottom of the groove cut you've made in the plywood. Since your groove in the plywood is centered, this bit setting will work for cutting both sides of the tongue in the edging. Then, make two passes on each face of a piece of scrap that's the same thickness as your edging stock to see if your tongue setting is correct. Make sure to control these cuts with feather boards on top and in front to keep the scrap piece held securely against the fence. The tongue on my test piece actually fits together pretty well. It's a good friction fit that I don't have to force together, but it sure doesn't always work out this way. If the tongue is too thick to start with, raise the bit just a little bit and make two more passes to cut a thinner tongue. And if the tongue is too thin, lower the bit just a little bit and try it again on a fresh scrap piece to cut a thicker tongue. Keep trying until you get the tongue fitting the groove just right. Then, route the tongues on your actual edging work pieces and rip the strips to final width at the table saw. So all that's left to do at this point is to spread glue in the grooves and then clamp the edging in place. And then when the glue dries, trim off the excess. I've used interlocking edging like this on many projects over the years. It's durable, it won't fall off over time, and it's self-registering. So give it a try on one of your upcoming plywood projects, and thanks for watching.